Hi guys, this is Gordon at Kaizen Active and this is a food diary review for you all to get something um, positive from and kind of be able to make kind of a change or two that's really going to help. There's actually some really important topics in this one, so it's a lot you're going to get a lot more than just eat this and don't eat that. There's some bigger concepts going on and I think it's really important to kind of share these with you. So what I want to start with, first of all, is just say that this particular person's done really well in the past. Um, they're currently doing kind of really well in some respects, but they're finding it difficult to eat as they as they maybe would like. So that would be one of the things that I would say. Um, the next thing I would say is they're completing their food diary. So most people kind of maybe don't persist with completing their food diary. This is a really good thing. They're completing their food diary so it allows us to have a look in and actually help them. So if you want some help then complete a food diary and we can have a look at it for you. Um, however, let's kind of, let's get on with this. So I want to give you just a very quick overview first of all so that you can see what I'm looking for. You can see the sort of patterns that, that happen with people and what they lead to. Um, I'm going to do a full week, so this is going to go from Friday through to Thursday because I don't have today's data yet. So Friday through to Thursday and I'm just going to give you a very quick look at it. Um, so what the, f the first thing I want to show you is look, on a Friday we've got a food diary, it looks good. I scroll to Saturday, I don't have anything. I scroll to Sunday, I don't have anything. I go to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And that's, that's great. So what you can see is we've got a food diary completed for five days out of seven. But we know that if anyone's not filling their food diary in at the weekend, they're unlikely to have been on track at the weekend. So we've we've got very limited data. Five days out of seven isn't brilliant. Um, I would also say as another pattern that we'd see, someone that normally is filling the food diary in that doesn't then fill their food diary in at the weekend is unlikely to have a good week. There's a reason they're not filling it in and getting back on the wagon can be difficult um, unless you've got a great plan in place. Okay, let me just go back out again or rather kind of back to the first day and let's talk about what's what's going on here. Um, in terms of the food choices, I've gone through what's good and what's bad before. Um, let me, I'll just read it out in case the screen's not really clear. Two wholemeal toast and coffee for breakfast. A large Larry scone and butter for snack, baked potato, beans and cheese kind of eat for lunch, five almonds, 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 I'm all, and I'm a teaser, um, and then kind of team training. So in terms of Friday as a as a day, if we were to kind of say it was kind of average, good, bad, um, I would say that it's it's definitely not good. And I think the first thing that 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 makes it not good is that What's going on here isn't actually kind of nourishing the body. It's not giving this individual what they need to feel good. There's plenty of carbs in the toast. There's plenty of carbs, of course, in the kind of in the in the scone. Plenty of carbs in the potato. Plenty of carbs in the kind of um, in, in the kind of chocolate, if you like. But there's very little by way of vitamins, minerals, nutrients. There's almost no kind of almost no if there's any I don't think there's any veg there's not any fruit so no fruit and no veg um, and nobody can feel good eating like that you just don't get what you need so one of the kind of key concepts is you've got to eat um, you've definitely got to eat vegetables and you've got to eat fruit and as a real practical tip for where to start to improve this particular diet um, start to swap out some of the junk foods that aren't given any nutrients and start to put in some fruit that would be my that would be my first suggestion because fruits an easy swap for chocolates and cakes and things so i would start there that would be my first point second point really important let's look at this 130 a baked potato beans and cheese and then a little bit of kind of chocolate kind of um at four till um, at four o'clock um and, and and some kind of um and some nuts actually so what are the chances of this person doing team training well? Um, well, team training is kind of really kind of tough. I, I kind of train next to them. I know they're working hard. So they're going to be limited in energy and they're going to feel not the best. Their mood's going to be a bit lower. But what's worst about this, I think, is that there's nothing afterwards. So if this diet is accurate, there's no food going in afterwards, which means Saturday and Sunday, and we haven't got any data for Saturday and Sunday. But if you don't eat after team training, you're highly, highly, highly unlikely to feel good. You've got to refuel and you've got to start the repair process. So these are my comments for Friday. I'm going to skip through Saturday and Sunday because they're obviously not there. 
And if I go to Monday and just have a wee look at it again, um, two slices of wholemeal toast and honey, protein smoothie and a coffee. I don't know what's in the smoothie, so I'll maybe kind of find out a little bit more about that. Um, toast and honey for breakfast um, and, and a protein smoothie. And that's all good, happy with that. Dairy box chocolates and celebrations. Um, clearly that's not the best. So we talked about swapping that out. This is a pattern that we're seeing repeated just now. This particular individual, actually, if I go to Tuesday, rather than go through all these days, Lindor's and Lindor's, um, which are very nice chocolates, but they're still not really going to help. We've got kind of some chocolates in on Wednesday. We've got scones and Lindor's and dairy milk, kind of, or dairy box chocolates on Thursday. So far too much chocolate going on in this, in this particular individual's diet. But I can understand the reason for it. Um, and I'm going to kind of show you why why it's going on, um, or one of the potential reasons why it's going on. So Monday, we know they're going to be training later in the day. I think from memory, having a chat with this person, they kind of would have done some exercise over the weekend too. So breakfast has been fine. This is not the way to snack. Clearly, curried sweet potato soup and cottage cheese. I just wonder if that's enough. In fact, it's not a wonder if that's enough. I know it's not enough. So when we look at everything that's going into this point. This person didn't eat enough to do well in training again. Protein shakes just with water, um, and that's only going to start the repair process. And even at that, without some carbs going inside in alongside it, um, it doesn't work anywhere near as well. So if you're having a protein shake after training, you definitely want it either with a couple of pieces of fruit, um, minimum of one, but one to two pieces of fruit, or mix it up with some milk, because you need the carbs to start the refuel process. Not refueling properly is something that we'll kind of talk, touch on a wee bit later. Um, but it's got real problems for the potentially for the rest of the week. Turkey pieces, brown rice and broccoli. Um, not a bad evening meal, actually kind of quite a good evening meal. So I'm, I'm happy enough with that. That is in essence kind of doing the, the repair process. So just the protein going in here and then this a little bit later. I think that's okay, but I don't think they're eating enough. And we'll see the kind of as we kind of follow on. Um, okay, so we've got toast and peanut butter, large skinny latte, date and walnut scone. The problem with things like kind of skinny lattes and a date and walnut scone is there's no nutrients, so you've only got so many calories to get the good stuff into you. If you're not eating kind of, um, as I mentioned, kind of fruit and vegetables, then, and you're using those calories up with something else, you're not going to be feeling as good. And that's really kind of, I guess, what the purpose of this review is today. Eating like this, you can feel very good. You need vegetables and you need fruit um, and you need to eat enough. Um, let's have a look and see. We don't know about portion sizes, so it's hard to tell. But what we do know is that they're off to the gym again. And let me just kind of run through this. So every day we can look at team training, the gym, team training, the gym, team training. So they're training every day. Now, I think they train at the weekend as well and you need to rest. If you don't rest, then you're, you're going to feel really tired. And if you couple that up with not eating the right things or not eating enough, then there's only one outcome, you're going to feel rubbish. Um, all right, on to Wednesday. Wholemeal toast, protein smoothie, pretty good. Skinny latte, scone and butter, covered all of that. Um, and we know what the swaps are. So swap that for some fruit or swap that for some veg. You're going to feel a lot better. Here's one of the one of the kind of if you like one of the worst things. So turkey pieces, broccoli, and brown rice at one o'clock. Team training at six o'clock. Now you're never going to do well at that. You can't go into intense exercise on the back of not having eaten for five hours. It's just not going to work. Almost as bad, or, or if you like, potentially worse is after exercise. Three boiled eggs is not going to start the refuel process. So at that, you the day after, so not only you're not going to be feeling good here, but the day after, there's only going to be one outcome. And you can see it kind of happening. You get kind of your latte and your scone, your lenders again, your dairy box chocolates. You have to you have to eat after your exercise. You have to eat a little bit before your exercise. So as you can see. It, in terms of a food diary, it's, it is an example of one that's it's got some elements of good stuff in it, but it's also kind of really, it, you're not eating for, you're not eating to match your, your calorie intake and your nutrients 
with the demands of what you're putting on your body. So there's a there's a big thing for you to ask yourself. Does your nutrition match your kind of your activity levels? That would be one question to ask. Um, are you eating enough? Um, next question: Are you eating? Are you eating nutrients? Have you got vegetables and fruit in there? If you haven't, there's no way you're going to feel good. And if you're not feeling good, there's no way you're going to eat well, because you eat badly to make you feel better. Or rather, I say you eat badly. You maybe eat your kind of latte or your chocolates or whatever because you want to feel a bit different. So you need to eat fruit and you need to eat veg. Um, that's a really kind of important thing. If you don't do it. You're not going to get you're not going to get any long lasting results, and it's going to feel like a struggle. So, and you don't want that. Um, what else did I want to just mention with this? Um, yeah, if you're eating like this all the day or all the time, if you're always having lattes and chocolate and kind of scones and and, and the lattes aren't the kind of the, the big problem here, I guess. But if you're always doing that, how's that affecting your kind of self esteem? Because self esteem and willpower are really linked as well. So. If you're, if you're trying not to do that, but you're doing it every day, you're just gonna feel worse and worse and worse about yourself. And, and, and it's like a, it's a little bit of a spiral, so, um, or a kind of really negative spiral. So as a starting point, we've got a, we've got a troubleshooting guide. Hang on a second, I'll just drag it in. Um, we've got a troubleshooting guide, um, which some of you have got, um, but it talks about just kind of what happens if you've got low energy levels and you're not feeling good. So just kind of send us a quick post ask us for this and we'll kind of email it through it's uh, there should be a copy in the kaizen active private members area too um so i hope you've got kind of something useful from this i'll just kind of um, finish off with uh, just ask these questions of yourself again is your nutrition matching are you giving yourself what you need to match the amount of exercise you're doing that would be one question. So that means, are you having enough carbs to fuel your exercise? Are you having enough protein um, to to repair your muscles? Um, that would be kind of also important. And are you getting in vitamins and minerals so that you can feel good? These are the main things um, that I would that I would ask. Any questions? Just let me know. Otherwise, apologies for the length of, length of this video, but I hope there's some good stuff in there for you. Take care.